We're in Darien, Connecticut. And once again, we're running into another situation. We're tearing out a system that costs thousands of dollars to install. And all the problems with not only a bad installation, a bad approach, bad ideas on how to waterproof a basement compared to the right ideas. We have a channel uh, grate here that is just wrong for this particular setup, the volume of water that it needs to manage, its pitch, its placement, how it's set up that the water that does get into it how it gets into their channel system, to their gutter system, which runs along the wall. Wait do you see, this is really cool stuff, and if you're ever gonna waterproof your basement, this is a must-see video. This is the entrance into the basement, exit out of the basement, and a lot of times you're gonna get water that comes down the steps. It's tricky to fix without removing them and trying to seal and put all kinds of drainage in around there. It becomes a huge job, and, and most of the time, very unnecessary, so you can get a great deal of effectiveness by putting the appropriate drain in and it's one that would go across the bottom of the steps but how you put it in is you have to be very particular to make sure you have the right size drain we have a a, a drain across here that's very very small and if you look just goes to here and then somehow has to fill up high enough to get into where that that gutter system is and what happens as you can see here this thing just fills up with water until it overflows into the drainage system inside the house. Very uh, ineffective and, and pretty close to useless uh, just because of the nature of the drainage, the size of the drainage, and most importantly, where that drainage is placed. It's all way up within the depth of the floor. You just can't get enough of a pitch. You can't get any kind of a pitch in order to get this water over to the pump. This is a, a main area of concern. If you take a look, as we removed all this, now we're going to get enough drainage in here. The key is, is that our drainage is going to be down significantly lower. So this is going to drain down into our drainage, which is way below the bottom of the floor. No water is going to come in any contact with the actual main body of the floor. And we're, we have a pitch on this that's going around to our sump pump, and then the water's pumped up and out away from the house. Now, as we were cleaning this whole area out, you can see, and this is one of the things when we talk about, there's uh, the initial waterproofing when they built the house, they put footing drains in on the outside. And if you take a look here, there's an old rotted footing drain pipe. And these footing drains were put in to take water out away from the house. And there is some pitch here that you probably could get the water away. But what happens is, is that this drainage pipe went all the way around the house. And the type of pipe that's there it actually deteriorates over time sitting in water and it's under eight feet of dirt which seems to have crushed the pipe and filled it up with with uh, the backfill soil uh, rendering it uh, ineffective so to speak so when you have footing drains and you and you put dirt on top of them you got to remember the water is going to travel through that dirt down to where the drainage is and you can't help but have that soil migrate with it and clog the pipe itself and over time this particular type of pipe actually breaks down and then collapses, kind of like what it's doing here. The system we're putting in on the inside is gonna have every bit of the effect that this system was trying to have on the outside. We're just not putting eight feet of dirt on top of our drainage in here. Any water that was getting into this came through six to eight feet of soil down through the backfill. In other words, the area on the outside of the walls from here, eight feet out, had been dug out, this was all empty, and then they put that soil back in. They're never going to get the soil that sits on the outside of their basement wall as dense as the undisturbed soil in the area. It's just not going to happen. So when it does rain, this area out here fills up with water. As that water builds up, it's pushing down into the ground and up underneath your floor. With the drainage set up the way that we have it, you're never going to get that pressure built up underneath the floor. The hydrostatic pressure is completely eliminated so that you're not going to have your floor sitting in water. By doing this, on the inside, we're going to have a system that's perpetually self-cleaning, doesn't have eight feet of dirt on top of it, and will keep any pressure from building up underneath that floor, keep it completely free of water, and that allows the floor to get completely dry. And that's what you're looking to do when you're waterproofing your basement. 
Now, as far as the placement of the outdoor footing drains, this is your this is your footing here. This is the wall of the footing here, and you can see they framed it out, and it's all flat. And the pipe is right over next to where the footing is, and then they they basically bury it. There's a little bit of stone around this, but nothing like that you'd really want. Depending on when your house was built, stone became much more important to keep it really clean. They use filter paper and things like that. Uh, one of the problems, though even doing it that way, going to the extra steps of using filter paper, is that filter, by definition, is something that needs to be changed. So if you covered this with filter paper, as water would migrate down through that backfill soil, the filter paper would get clogged. And it's down here, so the only way you ever could change it would be to re-excavate, and you're never going to do that. So outside uh, footing drains have a limited lifespan, and also you need your lot to be perfectly set up to to run off so that you can get those drains to go to daylight. We've completely torn out the old system that was in here, and we've installed a drain that's over twice the size of the drain that was in there before, in here in a complete bed of stone that's going to facilitate any drainage down into ours, which is way below where this drainage is. Water flows downhill. The way it was set up before is that this drainage here was actually below where their drainage was inside of the basement. There's no way this water was going to get into there, so it would just fill up and work its way under the door sill and get on top of the floor and, and then flood the basement. So this is going to be all cemented in so that any water coming through down through the Bilco is going to get directly into the train and you saw the real nice clean setup that we have through our PVC right down into our corrugated perforated ADS pipe pitched all the way around to the to the pump. So if you like the video hit like and subscribe so you'll get our next videos as soon as they come out. And once again till next time Enjoy your dry basement.